And welcome to another episode of Chronicle 365. Uh, this is show number 35, um, and I'm joined tonight so far by Goat. What's up, Goat? Hey, not and, much. And Patty. How you doing, Patty? Hello. Hello. We were just talking about um, Goat, just uh, since you're coming into uh, the conversation, we were just talking right before the show started about um, music that makes us feel old. And I guess for some of the, you know, some of the generation above us, uh, they would think that our, you know, my uh, idea of uh, old music, if you will, is not really old at all. But for me, it's like it makes me feel old. Damn it! So that's what it is. Um, the uh, I had some Hootie and the Blowfish playing mm-hmm. um, on Spotify, and then right after that, I had uh, the freaking Wallflowers with uh, One Headlight. I mean, that album uh, was one of the ones that like kind of kicked off my senior year of high school. Um, and then we started uh, talking about uh, I was driving today and like the top 40 uh, that plays like uh, music from like the 80s, 90s and now um, they were saying you know they, they were playing uh, uh, what was it Spanish Lullaby I think that's the name of the song by Madonna um, and I was just like thinking to myself I was like you know what I'm glad they don't make music like this anymore you know because I mean you hear the wallflowers it's like okay this, this, this is good I mean this is stuff you know from my generation but then you hear some Older '80s, uh, and uh, Leo would probably be uh, freaking out right now. Don't don't slam the '80s. Um, but uh, I, you know, I dig uh, some of the stuff from the '80s, but not all of it. You know. No, I don't normally feel old, but I was driving one day, and I forget where I was driving to. But I was listening to the classic rock station. Mm-hmm. Classic rock, because I like a lot of stuff from the '60s and '70s. You know. Right. You know how I am. A song from Green Day's Dookie album started playing. Are you freaking no. kidding me, dude? On the classic rock station. I'm like, I'm way too young to have the songs like I listened to in high school and middle school be playing on this station. You, you know, you're sitting here and all of a sudden, uh, you know, there, there is, again, classic rock and all of a sudden you hear, do you have the time? You're like, no! <laughs> yeah, Clearly it, that's it, somebody's idea of a bad joke. No, I've listened more and more and like... There's a lot of stuff creeping in from the late 80s. They're, they're calling it classic rock, late 80s, early 90s. So so eventually we're going to start hearing like freaking, um, uh, what's the name? Um, oh, their name, yeah, I, I see Ice-T. the name. Ice-T. No, no, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking Ice-T, but I mean, yeah, Ice-T. <laughs> That's going to be funny. How, 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 how would you classify, you know, 80s rap? Is that going to be classic rap? That would be like classic hip hop, I think. Um, I mean, you're talking uh, like Dougie Fresh, and you're talking like uh, freaking uh, Sugar Hill Gang, Fresh Prince. Even though he was, you know, for a lot of people, they did not consider him rap. You know, I mean, that was like the parent safe rap. You know, uh, Fresh uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Uh, you know, he was one of those guys that could get away with virtually anything because, I mean, he kept the stuff relatively clean. And I think it, and I remember, actually, I remember this actually kind of took my uh, my mother uh, back a little bit because, you know, we're watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you know, my brother had, uh, you know, on the DJ, he's the rapper album, you know, that had like Parents Just Don't Understand. It's, you know, oh, this is good wholesome rap, you know, I mean, and then all of a sudden Bad Boys comes out and, you know, he's all of a sudden crazy uh, F-bomb left and right. And uh, my mom was like, oh, um... Hmm. I mean, and that, those movies uh, were kind of right up there with uh, some Jay and Silent Bob type fare when it comes to uh, you know how many uh, how much cursing was in them. I think there was a counter on one of them that had like uh, they they calculated it out that uh, they dropped the f bomb at least once every like twenty two seconds, something like that. I mean, it was just or, or that would be the average for uh, one of the Bad Boys movies. Um, but uh, no. It, it, I don't think there's. The, the, why don't you ever really see classic hip hop radio stations? I mean, uh, I would assume there's a market for it. And it doesn't it. exist yet, but now <laughs> it does. Yeah, and that's and really, we should have marketed it. Well, that's the whole thing. I don't think that there really is a station out there. So, Patty, uh, I think you need to start going and getting some copyrights, some patents, stuff like that. Um, you know, we'll establish a station and we'll we'll make. Thing is, radio doesn't make money anymore. It's, it's, <laughs> 
that's the thing. I mean, it's just something to do. Exactly. I mean, you, you look at. I mean, because it's all about uh, advertising driven now. I mean, that's all it is. It's all ad driven now, and uh, people are not really paying attention to the radio anymore. They put on XM or they'll put on uh, Sirius. Wait, is Sirius the thing now, or did they merge? <laughs> I, I steal music from the internet and I put it on my MP3 player and yeah, I don't think I've paid for music in years. Well, see, the thing is, I I used to be one that would uh, do the same thing. LimeWire, Net, uh, what was it? Um, what was the the grandfather? Uh, Torrent. Goat? Well, you, well, see, that's the whole thing. With uh, now, it's I mean, back in the day, whenever you had like Bear Share and um, what was the name of the the first one? The like uh, Napster, that was it. Uh, you know, Napster and all those. You could get individual. How sad is that? We almost forgot about what Napster's <laughs> name was, and it was you know. The shit. And that was only 10 I years ago. I air quotes like you guys can even see me. Yeah, I know. What's up with your uh, camera? Your camera hasn't been on for the past couple nights. It, yeah, stress. You, you don't want to see all this. <laughs> um, uh, Goat, back in the day, what would you use? Would you use Napster? Would you use uh, BearShare? What, what, what was your poison? None of the above. Really? When, when Napster became big, I was a freshman in college. Okay. Oh, so you just have I, servers every week. I had a thirty gig hard drive at the time because you know it was massive. I know a massive thirty gig hard drive. Once a week, I would delete my entire music collection, go to one of the random file shares. A couple minutes later, I'd have another thirty gigs of new songs, and um, like that's how I would do it every week. I remember going and visiting uh, Dig, uh, who's been on the show before. Um, visiting Dig uh, at uh, Georgia Tech. And this was my first experience with seeing uh, super. I won't well, back back then. It was super high speed. You know, um, they were working off of uh, OC3 uh, at Georgia Tech, and uh, they were. He was like, "Hey, uh, you want to watch a movie?" I'm like, "Sure." And he's like, uh, "Well, Fight Club's on the uh, on the school servers." And I was like, "Wait, what?" I was like, "Well," and at, at the time, I was like, "What does that mean?" On the school servers, he's like, "Well, I mean, it's not technically not on the school servers, but I mean, it's on the file shares that are on the network here." And uh, next thing you know, um, that means it's streaming directly from the file share and playing. Uh, welcome to the show, Jimmy. How you doing, man? Haven't seen you in a couple days. Uh, he, he, uh, unmute yourself. You're you're the fourth one on, so just uh, unmute. You'll be good. Um, there you but, go. There you go. Welcome to the show, man. Hey. Um, but yeah, we were sitting there, and he's like, "All right," and this blew my mind because again, I'm used to uh, being at my house on dial-up and trying to get one song to come down took 15 minutes, you know, for like a three, three and a half to four meg file. He's sitting there. This is a 700 uh, meg file uh, for Fight Club, and it was a theater rip, so it was you know a guy with a camera, kind of half, you know, kind of like what you can buy in uh, inner city in New York. He sits there and he just drags it to his desktop and it's just bing. and I was just like, oh, I need to go to college. <laughs> yeah, it, it should have taken a little over like fifty six seconds. Yeah, yeah, it 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 was, and that was limited by his computer, not the school's network. <laughs> yes, yes, because uh, the, the the network freaking flew, dude, and you know popped it on and uh, uh, enjoyed Fight Club that night. I was like, you know, this is. I can I stay here like another weekend because you know I I, I have some uh, and at the time this was before uh, th this was like after the uh, what was it um it was a zip drive you remember those things uh, it was like a f fifty meg the hard, the hard one right yeah 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 it it, it wasn't like um it, it was Not like uh, a floppy it was but it was hard hard plastic either that or they called it like a super drive or something like that um it was uh, it held like fifty megs or something like that and I, was just I thought like, it was one meg. No, 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 no. The um, uh, the small floppies did. Uh, I man, now I oh, need to. Yeah. The, the, this was I know before. What you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. This was right before um, my hard drive or my entire computer setup uh got stolen. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't this All right, someone's uh cracking pretty bad in here. Um, here, let's That's probably see. me. I'm gonna put this on in, in the chat share here for you guys. This was the drive that I had thing was freaking awesome um, and yeah it would hold 100 megs and you know just pop that thing in there uh, and bring it along but uh, 
you know, I now you look at how you know fast it was back then, and now you look at uh, what it costs for like thirty dollars a month to have internet, you know, you know, high speed at your house, and now you know Google's trying to lay all the fiber out there, and uh, I mean even in Columbia County here in Augusta, they're laying fiber out, uh, you know, to try to boost the speeds. But I heard the U.S. is like anywhere between like the sixteenth to the twenty-fifth uh, slowest internet available in like in the world right now. Um, you know, everyone else has like, you know, the very, very thick pipes and it's, you know, dirt cheap, but all of our stupid regulations are keeping things slow. Um, have either of you guys heard, or has any of you guys ever heard of that? I have heard that. I've heard that. <laughs> but, you know, it just makes me think back in the day, having dial up was freaking like amazing. 56.6, man. I was like top of the world. <laughs> Nowadays, like I said, I've moved all my music to the cloud because I just assume anywhere I am, my phone will be able to stream that music fast enough for me to listen to it. Uh huh. I mean, like, it's mind blowing. We're gone. We're living in the future. Yes. Uh, I mean, I mean, just thinking about it. Back in the day, we had, um, uh, you know, the phone that I had to communicate with, gosh, the 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 cell phone I had was. One of the old brick Nokia's had the yellow face on it, um, and it was one of those ones where you could literally like throw it through a window, like uh, at the you know during freaking uh, the Watchmen where they throw the Molotov cocktail through the through the window. I mean, you could throw one of those old Nokia phones and it would break glass and still work, you know, after you know shattered plate glass window. But um, I you couldn't. I mean, the most you could do with those things outside of making a call was play Snake. If that, I mean, if you had a phone that could play Snake, I mean, that was pretty pimp. Now, I mean, with, uh, again, the high speed that you have. Uh, now, do you guys have 4G uh, in Palm Coast? Yes, we do. I hate you. I, I was going to say, I don't know. I can't afford it. <laughs> I hate you. I, I, like, 90% of Palm Coast, I have 4G. Sometimes it drops to 2. But I Now, what type of speeds are you getting with 4G? Um, Enough that I don't know because I've never bothered to look because it's fast enough that I don't think about it. Is it uh? Th- th- does it run faster than uh, your home pipe? That's a damn good question. Um, <laughs> I honestly cannot answer that. Yeah. I don't download large enough files on my phone. Like, I stream music from my phone, but then again, I'm not really thinking about file size for that. Right. See, see. I do about. A gig and a half on my phone a month, mm-hmm. without worrying about download speeds. And our home computers, we might do maybe three gigs. That's it. And occasionally, I'm waiting. Well, I think so. I don't know. I used to know, but then my router died, and God. now I have no way to check with the freaking wireless router. Uh, are, are you still big stickler on uptimes uh, for for your systems? Or I don't that? have any. Servers running in my house right now. Not back, in, back in the day, I remember he was like, it's, "He goes, oh, it, 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 I had to reboot. I did not want to reboot. It's been 196 50. days. No, <laughs> I need this critical system patch. But 196 days, I'm going to ruin it." <laughs> um, no, uh, we have. Um, uh, right now, we're still stuck in 3G land. Um, they're supposed to, we're supposed to be getting a four uh, yeah, four G LTE. What we call 3G and 4G is a lie. It is a lie. The standards for 3G and 4G are ridiculous. And um, what they should be and what we're getting, it's like, uh, let's see, spec standards. Um, I read this before. Like 4G... I was reading like something along where you could download a DVD over 4G in a couple seconds. Seriously? Uh, Speed-wise. Here we go. Let's see. But yeah, like... Um. It's funny because this has no bearing on my life whatsoever because <laughs> I don't even have an iPhone. Uh, yeah. I... I I mean, yeah. It's well, not even a droid. 
It's just uh, a phone. I, I don't but it's not a flip phone. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I remember uh, <laughs> back in 2000, I'd say 2005, the flip phones, the uh, Razor. You guys remember the Motorola Razor that came yes. out? Yes. Yeah. That was yeah. the iPhone of its day. I mean, that was before anyone knew anything about a smartphone. Steve yeah, Jobs. I never had one of those either. <laughs> it was like two months after I got it, it was a piece of crap. I remember I was working for a mortgage company in Palm Coast, and uh, and you know I'll I'll put them on blast because they uh, are complete and total. Oh, well, they're done. They're they're no more in existence, and I think the FBI may be after them, uh, <laughs> uh, or it should uh, be right. Uh, but um, the business was run by two brothers. It was called Family First Mortgage, and uh, I was the IT, um, uh, the assistant IT manager. Uh, that's a whole long story in itself. Why I was not the IT manager, uh, and actually, I may actually go into that after the YouTube portion. Um, but uh, we, I, you know, I was tasked with acquiring new phones for them so you know we're like all right well here's the package packages that are available you can get you know for you you can get a blackberry because back then that was pretty much the multitasking phone i mean that was the thing that you can do the calendars with and all that good stuff and then they're like "Ooh, but this new razor came out you know and back then i think if i remember correctly the just price what was that nothing oh you're still still testing your microphone we can still hear you jimmy so it's all good yeah I found the the spec speeds when you're done, Kenny. Because you're no gonna be a, uh, just really, really quick. It was like 350 bucks per phone, um, and we got them in. And I mean, yeah, they were pretty for a few, you know, for a few minutes. And then I was just like, okay, but it's thin. Is that all it has going for it? I mean, it's not like world changing for me. But the second that they started talking about the iPhone and it coming out, that was right around when things were starting to go south for the business. Um, well, actually, we didn't. Even, we didn't really know it was going south. They did, but uh, I'm glad I got a, got out of there before um, they closed the doors unexpectedly. Which again, I'll go into a little bit later on in the show. Uh, what uh, What are the specs you got there? Go, uh, All right. Originally, as intended by the specs, 4G was supposed to cover networks capable of 100 megabits per second for fully mobile applications, and up to a gigabit a second for wireless LAN applications. Wow. So, like. Your local area network, that's just wandering around town. Mm -hmm. um, and a gigabit a second, basically backing up my hard drive in 30 seconds from when I was in college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Over my phone. Like, wow. That's it, what it was supposed to be. I love the future. I really, really do. Because and like now, real world speeds, they're saying, are something around like 12 megabits per second, maybe a little bit higher. Gotcha. So we're talking an eighth of where they should be. Okay. So all right. So if they're an eighth of where they should be now, is that just here in the states, or is that that's like that's everywhere? Because four G, it was a standard they created as a plan of where to go, and then people are like, well, we don't want to call it three G plus, so let's just call it four G or something because oh. it's faster than three G. So we're just gonna usurp the name and call it 4G, even though it doesn't meet the standard for what 4G really is. Then what about the, the stupid uh, 4G LTE nonsense? Same thing. Same thing? Yeah, it's um, long-term evolution. It's just all bullshit stuff. <laughs> We're just going to call it something it's else, add speak. some more money to it, and... Pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty much, you know... Because you're stupid. I'm oozing wound with a band-aid on it. The thing, the thing is, I'm not stupid, but I'll buy it anyway. Dude. Like, I know what's going on, but I'm going to buy it. Are you an Apple guy? Do you think you're not stupid? No, I don't. I'm not an Apple guy. Ask Kenny. Ask Kenny. <laughs> um, no, well, well, you do have an iPad, and you do have the MacBook Pro. Given to me by my school. Okay, well. We'll, we'll give you a pass on that, um, but no, we uh, ended up having um, what was it? Uh, I was a big Apple fanboy for a very long time. Um, I mean, I just could never afford a damn thing. Uh, now the, I remember the first Mac that I got was, and it wasn't mine. But we just got it for we got it for the family. Uh, we were walking through the mall. The um, this was back when the Daytona Mall wasn't the Ghetto Mall. You know, you had Volusia Mall and you had the Daytona Mall. And Daytona Mall turned into like the low rent Ghetto Mall. But uh, back in the day, there was a Radio Shack that was in there, and we were walking through, and my my dad was like, "You know, what? we're getting a computer today." And I was just like, 
really? And he's like, yeah, we're going to get one. And my mom was even like, we, we are? He's like, yeah, we, we need one. Why? I don't know. We just need one. That's what everyone says. We need a computer. So we walk through, and they're like, Kenny, you're the one. And I'm like maybe 12, if not you know, 12, 13. And my dad looks at me, and we're, the whole family is there. He's like, Kenny, you know computers more than anybody in this family. What should we get? And I was like, walk with Walk with me right now. We went right over to the Mac section because that was back when you could buy a Mac in freaking Radio Shack. Um, and I was with like, the right. with like the neon colors. No, no, no. This this predated the the iMac. This pre predated the you know the ones that had Jeff Goldblum uh, doing his uh, his advertisement for it. No, this was one of the all in one. Because they were they were one of the pioneers of the all in one system. Um, it was like the one with the case. The, it was a Performa 450, if I remember correctly. Oh, um, my goodness. Yes, uh, and it's sad that I actually remember uh, the hell freaking yes, it was a Performa. Wait, no, never mind. It wasn't a Performa 450, uh, it, it, but it was a Performa, um, and it was one of the all-in-one. All in it was like a 15-inch screen, um, and uh, it was... I remember my dad was freaking out because it came with. You ready for this goat? You'll remember this. Groilers Encyclopedia. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, yes. So we sit there and we, you know, we get it home. He's like, "Can he set it up?" I'm like, oh, "With pleasure." Set the whole thing up, and I get it. You know, I'm getting the thing. You know, I'm pretty much throwing styrofoam and uh, the bubble wrap around. <laughs> and the first thing he says is, "Put in that encyclopedia." He's like, "He goes, you mean it?" And my dad, I mean, total. I'm sorry, dad, if you're watching this, but total, like, uh, out of touch generation type of deal. He was like, "You mean to tell me that it fits an entire encyclopedia set on one disc?" And I'm like, yes, Father, it does. Watch this. We put it in. I was like, and not only is there words, there's pictures and video. And the video had to have been literally like the grainiest, grittiest, uh, like 20 frames per second, black and white, uh, on the CD-ROM. And it was the uh, freaking Hindenburg. Uh, and they tried to, you know, clean it up a little bit. But you got the, oh, the humanity. And my dad's like, and my mother's name's Gail. I was like, Gail, get over here. He's watching the Hindenburg on the computer. I mean, it's almost like when the people got TVs for the first time. Like, look, look, there's, there's talking people on the TV. Um, but he sat down and, I mean, he spent hours looking at that freaking encyclopedia. Like, it, like I just showed him the uh, the burning bush. I mean, it was just like, wow, just click. click. Is that your first computer, Kenny? Uh, no, no, no. The first computer that we had I was... I had an older one. Yeah. No, we had a Commodore 64. That was the first computer that we got. Um, and I remember setting it up, hooking it up to my mom's TV in her room, and I closed the door, and I wrote my first program, which was in the book. They gave the instructions for it, and it was uh, it started out with a little yellow ball at the very top left of the screen, and when you ran the program, it would go all the way down on a diagonal, and when it hit the bottom of the screen, it would turn a different color and then bounce off the screen. And it just did that in repetition, just changing colors. And I was like, I have made fire! You know? <laughs> <laughs> Took me all damn day to, to uh, put in the code. Um, but yeah, man, that was, that was, that was my first uh, PC. What was your first? Mine was the Tandy 1000EX. Oh, that's a beaut. With an 8088. Nice. Beautiful. I don't know how much memory I had. I think I had like 128K. Mm -hmm. it, it was a beast. Yes, I'm looking at a picture of it right now. Uh, oh, and they have the uh, Tandy 1000 computer uh, Christmas commercial. Okay, guys, just really quick. I'm going to do a screen share because this is something that we need to watch. Uh, Jimmy, what about you? What was your first computer? We had a Commodore 64 also. Nice. Which I burnt up because uh, you could do that back then. Because it had those fuses, right? Yeah. I think At the very back. But um, I left it on one day, and I remember it came back, and it didn't work, and thankfully my parents don't watch this show, so <laughs> I'm sure it'll be hell to pay. <laughs> nice. But, uh, I do remember my sister getting a Amiga, uh, what's it like, Amiga 3000 or something like that. Nice. Um, uh, because she was going to go into computer science as a freshman in college and they spent like a god awful amount on that because it was supposedly the thing that you had to have to do computer science at the time and um, and then she promptly 
put SimCity on it and <laughs> never went back to uh, Computer Science. <laughs> the, the, the Sim series has, has 1990, no 89, 90. Nice. I uh, the other night Leo was actually Leo has his old SimCity 2000 disc still, and he was uh, putting that up. Uh, Patty, do you remember the first computer you had? I don't. Oh, but I can tell, tell you, the I, between the nerds and the not nerds. Um, <laughs> but no, well, no, I was just poor. Um, oh. I, I remember getting my first computer like ninety, God, ninety nine. Okay. Like for real, and it was something that somebody gave me. Their husband mm -hmm. rebuilt computers, and she felt sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, here, my husband fixed this one, and the people never came back and got it. You can have it. Hey, I mean, th those are the best type of machines when you when you happen to happen into stuff. Um, now, it's always interesting when people give you computers and they forget to wipe their information off. Um, right. And you open it up, and, like, I've... Uh, you know, I fix computers for a living as well. I mean, that's one of the side things that I do. Same, uh, Goat, you've done it uh, before as well, correct? Yeah, I won't do it again. <laughs> oh, are you done? <laughs> Have you given up that ghost? My problem with that is you fix their problem. And then, like, eight weeks later, something completely unrelated breaks, and it's your fault. Well, see, that's the stipulation I always put out there. It's like, look, this is all I'm touching. These are the things that I'm doing. I, you know, they don't understand that. They don't understand that. <laughs> You adjusted my monitor preferences. The hard drive is dead. It's your fault. <laughs> I've actually had one client uh, recently say to me, he's like, uh, I mean, it's the rapport that we have now is he'll give a call, and he won't say hi. He won't say, hey, can I need your help? What he'll say is, so dropping a laptop from about four foot up while you're walking out to your car, on, and it hits the concrete, and then the screen won't turn on. That's not a good thing, right? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, bring it over. I'll take a look at it. You know, I mean, he always describes it like uh, the other day. He's like, so dropping your phone in a sink full of water, and when you pull it out of the water, there's no power. It's probably dead, right? Yep, <laughs> it's dead. Um, and if you guys haven't heard Jimmy for a little bit, his uh, he's having some technical difficulties. Get that shit right, man. <laughs> Learn sign language. Yeah, um, but uh, what we're gonna do? Uh, um, we're gonna get ready. To, not yet. We're gonna <laughs> get, <laughs> off the YouTube channel for a second um, and go continue with the podcast. What we're gonna do is I titled tonight's show. Uh, CBS is making Under the Dome uh, a TV show. Um, some nice, Jimmy. That was good. Um, that oh, that wasn't you. Was that you, Patty? It was nice, um, and uh, but apparently, and now I've never read that book because it's a um, Stephen King book, and apparently it's extremely uh, violent and graphic. Which one? Uh, Under the Dome. I haven't read that one. I've read uh, a lot of Stephen King, but not that one. I've heard uh, from. Uh, I heard that it's uh, really, really heavy um, and very violent, and apparently it's being put to see being can't, made by CBS. Can't imagine Stephen King books being described in that manner. See now, you know, basic cable. I could. I mean, they they did a halfway decent job with it, and I think the only reason why that movie succeeded was because they hired freaking Tim Curry. That's the only reason why that it uh, did even part justice. No, go. Don't shake your head. Having, uh, I didn't even make it through the movie. Having Tim Curry as a freaking clown uh, with jagged teeth. I'm sorry. I'm checking. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't make it through the movie. I read the books. Tried to watch the movie. I'm like, this is just not even close. I just <laughs> stop. Nice, Patty. Pa Patty's all all pulling producer duties tonight. I like it. Um, but uh, now I'll I'll say go uh, the book versus the t the mini series. Uh, I'll have to agree. It, 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 no comparison. None whatsoever. Um. And then, was, see, you never made it through the entire miniseries. They ended with, like, this gigantic spider. Spoilers. Um, Posting with spoilers. Uh, but it, it ended with, uh, Pennywise was this gigantic spider, and that's how it ended the freaking movie. Oh, my God. And to this day, I can't walk over grates going, like, into the grocery store. You're going to float, Georgie. Yes. Oh, God, no, no, oh, no. Oh. Before before I kill the YouTube feed, I have a freaking story for you guys. And if she ever watches the show, she uh, she's gonna she's gonna hate me for this. When I was in band at FPC senior year, um, I used to keep my hair bald. I mean, I would take a big to it. I was bald. 
So I would go, uh, and we had these uh, practice rooms in the band room. Um, and the, the way it, the way we worked as a band was if we had some off time, we would either go in the, in, in the practice rooms and either practice or sleep. Um, and we would turn out the Oh, no. So I'm walking through, and uh, the day prior, I, uh, one of the clarinet players, I think she played clarinet, either that or saxophone, um, Marilyn Rozelle, she... Um, was talking to us about how she hated the show, or she hated uh, the movie It, namely because of Pennywise. Um, that's the thing that would, you know, that drove her nuts. She hated, uh, she hates clowns first of all, but his portrayal was, again, it, it freaked her out, like nightmares freaked her out. So, I had a knack for doing the voice. I mean, hey, yeah, Georgie. You know, I mean, I would really, really do it up. And she would hear me, you know, every once in a while, uh, you know, say, say it in the bedroom, shut up, Kenny, shut up. So I'm walking by and I see that she's sitting in, or she's, you know, sitting in a dark room. She's sitting in one of the uh, practice rooms. So, you know, of course, I'm like, oh, this, this will be fun. Either this is going to be fun or this is going to hurt because um, she's going to kill me. <laughs> I was, I was like, I'll take my chances. So I walk up, and the way they had it was you had these big um, glass windows uh, in the door so you can you know look in and see what's going on, but they were kind of soundproof. So she was half asleep, too, so this is bad. Um, I, <laughs> I, I turned the handle quietly, and I opened the door, and she had the light off, so the light was shining uh, from behind, so I was just a silhouette, bald silhouette. I walk in, and I pull the door, too. And there was a couple of the, the percussion line that were watching me do do this, and she's like, "Who is that?" And I just said, "You're going to float, Marilyn." We let off this ear-piercing scream. <laughs> <laughs> made Mr. Grad, the band teacher, peek his head out and saying, "What the hell is going on out here?" I was like, "Nothing, Mr. Grad, nothing." He's like, "There better be nothing." I mean, Mr. Grad, he, he he didn't play, but um, she, I mean, I she started crying. I mean, I mean, she hated me for a good week. Wouldn't talk to me, um, at all. And but you know what? Totally worth it. Totally, <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and end the uh, YouTube uh cast uh podcast or webcast. But we're gonna go ahead and move on to the regular podcast. And if you want to hear more about other TV shows that or movies that should not have been adapted, uh, from you know opted as a uh, motion picture as opposed to being just leaving the book alone. Listen to the uh, podcast on iTunes or through FeedBurner. The link will be right on this movie from Jimmy. Is, uh, I don't even know if Jimmy's still connected. He looks kind of still. Uh, but <laughs> from uh, Jimmy, Goat, hey. Leo, who just ho hopped on and we have to hear him hey. and Patty, we will talk, we'll be talking to you guys later.